Hey everybody, it's Brian and this is our 11th Qt tutorial with C++. Today we're going to be covering the Qdir. Now, what is Qdir? If you go to the help, type Qdir, you can just simply click it and it'll tell you exactly what it is. It says the Qdir class provides access to directory structures and their contents. And you can click more and it just jumps you down and it gives you a very detailed reference. Um, I want you to start using the built-in help. Um, Qt Creator, actually Qt comes with this very extensive help library. It's very, very good. Um, let's just grab that include, copy it, and let's go file, new project, let's just make a new console. And then we'll say uh, ders and we're just gonna go next, next, finish and let's just include QDebug and we're going to include QDir. Now if you're working with a a new class in Qt and you don't really know what to do, really really use the help file. I mean it gives you all of the functions and if you click on a function name it takes you right to the description. It's very very handy. We're just going to cover some of the basic ones. Um, for example, how to create one. You can see the constructor right here is, you know, constant qdir and er. Um, uh, reference to path, uh, reference to path. I mean, it's pretty simple. Really, all you need to do is just give it a name. So let's go back in here. qdir. And let's give it the path. And we're going to use one of the functions called exists. So we're going to say um, qdebug. We just want to see if this exists. Let's run this, and you see our directory does exist, E drive test or whatever directory you're using. If you're on a Windows machine, you'll note that the forward slash, what Qt does is automatically translates that slash into a forward slash. The reason why you don't use this slash <clears throat> is because that is an escape sequence. I mean, you could very easily use two of them, but it gets kind of tedious. It's just easier to use the cross-platform method, forward slash. And if you're on, say, a Linux or Unix system, you would, you know, use the forward slash method also. All right. What is another one here? Let's try a directory we know does not exist. Just type some random garbage. And let's run it again. And you can see that false. It does not exist. Now, that's a pretty simple method of determining whether or not your directory actually exists. But how do you know what directories and what drives are actually on the hard drive? Well, that's a good question. What we're going to do is just delete that. We use the default constructor. And we're going to use drives. Now, what is drives, you ask? Well, if you mouse over, it tells you it's a Q file info list. Um, basically, if you have any questions, like I said, jump into the help. And what's going to go up here? We're going to go down here and find it real quick. Do, 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 do. Drives, where are you at? Drives, right here. It says, uh, returns a list of root directories on the system. On Windows, this returns a Q file info, objects, CDE, etc. On other operating system, it's just the root directory, the forward slash. See, pretty easy to use. Um, it also tells you you can see root and see root path. And, of course, tells you exactly what a Q file info list is if you click on it. Let's go back. Go back here and say for each Q file info Let's actually include this. Now, 
If you're used to just straight C++, you're probably wondering what in the world is for each. This is a uh, a method they've actually borrowed from other languages like C# -sharp and Java. It allows you to quickly and easily go through a collection without actually doing an iterator. And let's say, uh, oops, queued debug. And you notice how when you access this Q file info, you get all the properties of it. And well, how do you know which one you want? Very simple. You look it up in the help. Um, for this one, we're just going to use um, absolute file path. Let's compile and run this. And I have quite a few drives on my system because this is uh, my gaming slash development box. So you can see there are all my hard drives. And there would be more, but I have quite a few of them disconnected just because I didn't want them connected running up my power bill. So that's how you get the drives out of here. Um, the QDIR class also has the functionality of being able to do certain things. For example, you can create directories. You can make dir and make path. Now, what's the difference between these two? You know I'm going to tell you to look it up in the help, but I'll explain it. Uh, the make dir will make a subdirectory of the current dir, where make path will actually make the folder plus all parent folders that are needed. Um, for example, you notice how we just have mdir, and there's no real reference to a path, so it's going to use the current dir in the system. But if we go make path, and now it wants a constant q string, the directory path, and let's just say e test. And we'll just say Z, Z, Z. And let's add a little logic in here. Uh, let's actually add a Q string in here, just for the sake of argument here. And let's just copy and paste this. So we're just simply going to say if it doesn't exist, then we're going to create it. We'll say else. Oops, got my caps lock on. add us a little output here so we know exactly what's going on. All right, now let's pick this apart real quick. Basically, we're making a Q dir and a Q string. The string represents the path which does not currently exist. So if it doesn't exist, it's going to actually make it with all the roots if necessary, and then print out created. If it does exist, it'll print out already misspelled. Print out already exists. Let's save and run. And you see the first time we run it, it says created. Now let's run it again, and it says already exists. Pretty neat, huh? All right, let's go back here. And what else is there in here? You can see that there is a lot of like entry lists and things of that nature. What what in the world is an entry list? Entry info list, entry list. Well, <clears throat> this is how you get subfolders and files out of the QDIR. For example, the entry info list returns a list of Q file infos, um, where the entry list just returns a Q string list. So let's actually click the entry info list. And it says, <coughs> excuse me, returns a list of Q file info objects for all the files and directories in the directory according to the name and absolute filters previously set with the set names, filters, etc., etc. I'm not going to get so much into filters this tutorial. 
but I want you to really understand um, how to use this because this is a very big part of using the QDIR. So let's go back here. And let's actually just get rid of that string. And we'll say for each Q file info, M item in enter entry info list. And you got some properties, but we're just going to leave it blank just because I want to show you exactly what's going on here. <clears throat> and we will say Q debug. item whoops absolute file path let's compile and run and you see there is a listing of all the directories and sure enough there's that triple Z directory that we made earlier and you also notice how it's got the dot and the dot dot um, you can set filters get rid of those but that is an old uh, Unix notation that is you know the parent folder and the parent parent folder um, pretty easy to understand but if you've never seen it before you might be confused with what those directories are and that's very simple now if you wanted to determine what this was you could say something to the effect of so let's back up here if is dir and then you would say q debug whoops Let's just magically copy and paste this just to save us some typing. And we'll say file. So that would be how you would determine if it's a file or directory. You just say the Q file info, you'd say is dir or is file, and it would trigger off depending on which one it was. I don't think I have any files out there, so these sh should all be directories. And sure enough, we run it, it says dir, and then there's a bunch of them. Alrighty, well, this is Brian. I uh, hope you found this video educational and entertaining, and thank you for watching.